everyone. We will start in just a minute. If you would like, drop in the chat, just to make sure it's working where you're Zooming in from today. Northwoods Child Development Center, South Carolina, Texas. Perfect. All right. Well, we will go ahead and get started. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Nicole with Jackrabbit Care, and I'm thrilled to welcome you all to Summer Success, Nurturing Lifelong Learners During School Breaks. Um, joining me today is a very special guest, David Watkins, the founder of Plan My Kids. Before we dive into our discussion, let's go over a few housekeeping items. Everyone will be in listen-only mode throughout the webinar. However, we do want it to be an engaging experience for everyone, so please feel free to use the chat feature to interact with us. And if you do have specific questions for David, please use the Q&A feature. We'll try our best to address the questions throughout the webinar, but if not, then we will answer them during the Q&A session at the end. Also, we will be sending out a recording of the webinar within a day or two. Um, now, let me introduce you to our esteemed guest, David Watkins. David is not only a father of two, but also the visionary behind Plan My Kids, a concierge platform designed to help parents discover and plan enriching activities for their children. With his extensive experience and passion for parenting, David also writes about invaluable parenting tips and activity resources for Plan My Kids blog and hosts the highly acclaimed Parenting Pioneers podcast. Through his podcast, he navigates the dynamic landscape of urban life, shedding light on joys and challenges facing today's working parents. So without further ado, David, please take it away. Great. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me here today. So thanks, everyone, for sharing some time with us today um, as we talk about summer school, summer and taking school breaks and nurturing kids. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my summer. So I'm going to date myself a little bit here. So I uh, was a child in the 70s and the 80s. And you can imagine back then, I, kids were so excited to get out of school. I mean, I just remember the school bus going home. Like kids just like throwing stuff out the windows was probably the wrong thing to do. We were just so excited to, um, you know, to be outside of school uh, and enjoy our summers. And my summers were full. I lived in a cul-de-sac. Uh, so typical suburb child. You can imagine what that's like. If, if you were a kid like that, it was like, we, there was there were literally 20 kids on my cul-de-sac. So our days consisted of going outside, playing something in the cul-de-sac, whether it's wiffle ball or kickball, skateboards, bikes, whatever. Uh, and then if we weren't on the cul-de-sac, like my, our, we were at the pool. So our kids joined, our parents joined the pool. And so we would spend days there. There are even days when mom and dad mom or dad would like drop us off at the pool in the morning give us some money for you know for snacks and would pick us up at dinner time like that was a, that was just our our summer now i will say that i also grew up in the south so by the middle of summer it was too hot to go outside <laughs> like okay those days of kickball like nah, it's just kind of too too hot uh so if we weren't at the pool we were like just hanging out inside the house really just kind of doing nothing so the mornings we end up sleeping in later, uh, just kind of lounging around with friends. And I'll be honest with you, like towards the sort of two thirds of the way through summer, like I miss school. Uh, I was ready to uh, go back and see some of my friends. And I just had this sort of lethargy about school and so about summer. And so we're here to talk about, well, what does is, what is summer look like now for kids and how do they kind of keep up with that, um, keep up with their learning? So to start us off today, we wanted this to be um, a little bit um, participatory. So we have a little poll uh, for you that we'd like to share uh, to ask you how you as um, uh, parents are uh, prioritizing your, your kids' summer uh, this, this year. 
And so while those votes are coming in, Nicole, can you, how was your summer? I shared a little bit about my summer. How, how was your share? Can you tell us anything about your summer? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. currently live in Texas, but all my family, they live in Canada. So every year we would drive up to Canada and just spend time at the lake with my cousins. Um, so that's one of my favorite memories. We'd just be at the beach and swimming back and forth between two of our family cottages. Um, and it was a lot cooler there, too. So it wasn't miserable like the Texas heat. So I, yeah. I have seen what you're talking about. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Well, it's like we've got a good blend of uh, what what people are interested in doing this summer. Um, opportunities to make new friends. Absolutely. It seems to be edging out a little bit. Um, well, that's great. All right. So let's uh, share results here. Oh, can everyone see that? Yes. Looks like opportunities to make new friends has, has edged out here uh, next to just taking some time to relax, which I totally get. And we'll talk a little bit more of that as we get into this. All right. So it turns out that I'm not crazy, uh, that there actually is this thing called summer learning loss, uh, also referred to as summer setback or summer slide. And the Brookings Institute actually looked at a number of studies um, because parents uh, kind of felt this way, um, teachers kind of felt this way. So there's a number of studies being done. And it turns out that kids actually do uh, lose some of their knowledge over the summer as they're at the swimming pool and doing all kinds of crazy things, up to 30%. But there's a lot of factors that sort of play into this, not uh, it's, it's not sort of even killed across uh, all segments of, of kids. So it kind of depends on where you live, um, the age of your kids, as well as your socioeconomic status. And I guess the good news is that um, there's a good number of parents that are uh, putting their kids in structured programming over the summer. A 2019 study by the After School Alliance determined that 47% of families had their kids participate, participating in some kind of structured program. That could be summer learning, could be sports, could be camps, uh, or summer school, or even even a job. Uh, so that's good news. And this is a pre that was a pre pandemic uh, study. So I know talking with the American Camp Association, uh, there's been a huge surge after the pandemic uh, in camp. So hopefully that number's gone up. But that still also begs the question that there's probably at least half of families who aren't um, putting their kids into a structured program. So why is that? Um, I think uh, based on not, uh, you know my my information is a lot of this is contributed to cost, the rising cost of these programs. Transportation seems to be a challenge uh, for a lot of parents, as well as just the availability um, of programs that are need, near them. When we think about cost uh, nationwide, um, the average week of day camp is uh, just under $400, where the average cost of an overnight camp, or sometimes are referred to as a residence camp, is just under $900. Parents spend anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 per year on activities outside of school. So as you can imagine, this can be uh, prohibitive for some parents uh, to attend. So what are some options for, for parents? Um, uh, I like to recommend for parents who I'm helping to, to plan their summers uh, that they look at community centers uh, that are offered by their, um, maybe their local city or municipality. Faith-based organizations also provide uh, some low cost options. And there's a growing number of um, nonprofits out there too that can be looked into. And a couple other things I'll suggest is that there seems to be a growing number of um, programs that are offering scholarships as well for uh, for families, which is good. Um, and they usually have some sort of a short application process uh, that they use to provide those scholarships. And I'd also like to um, just remind people that there's, uh, especially day camps, uh, can be uh, qualify for child care tax credits. Uh, I'm certainly not a CPA, so you would all obviously want to check with <laughs> your tax advisor, but if your family qualifies and certain uh, uh, camps qualify, you can you can 
uh, submit that to get a tax credit. Typically, the litmus test that I use uh, and tell parents is like, if you can put your kids in a program while you're at work, then those, those programs typically qualify for those tax credits. Now, it turns out that, um, that kids who do participate uh, in learning programs over the summer actually seem to do better in school. So a 2021 study by the Wallace Foundation that surveyed uh, families with kids between kindergarten and eighth grade, uh, parents indicated that 25% uh, indicated that their kids were getting all A's compared to the 16% of parents who didn't send their kids to any sort of summer learning program. Uh, so that's almost a 10% increase of sort of combating sort of summer learning loss, which I think is um, pretty significant. And I can certainly attend to that. I remember, you know, my first few days of school and even talking to my kids now, they end up spending, you know, the first few weeks just rehashing things that they did the previous year. Um, to ask another poll, I wanted to see how uh, the audience here was planning to planning their kids this summer. So, uh, Nicole, if you wouldn't mind putting up another poll for us. So we want to see what what sort of things have you already planned for your kids this summer and choose as many of these as um, as you want, because you may be planning to do multiple things this summer. Um, I know my kids, uh, my kids are now my teenagers, but as they were they were growing up, um, you know, we looked for opportunities for them to get some downtime as well as some volunteering uh, opportunities, which were pretty um, good. It's hard to do during the school year when parents are so busy. So we found that there was a little bit more time to do things like that during the summertime. So we'll let those results kind of come in and see, see what people are doing. So it looks like we've got some summer camps and vacations. Yes, vacations are important. For us all to take, of course. Um, so I live in North Carolina, uh, in the Piedmont. So I'm between the mountains and I'm between and the and the beach. So uh, we have opportunities to head to the beach in the summertime or head to the mountains to escape the the heat. So we'll give it just a few more seconds to see how people are uh, thinking here. All right, we'll go ahead and share this. It looks like uh, some unstructured play and some family vacation seems to be uh, top in the list here. Um, oops, sorry. So we can see how that plays out. So that's that's good. And we'll, like I said, we'll talk a little bit about what that means for kids as well. All right. All right, so in our own study of... Um, uh, or in the in that same study of the Wallace Foundation, uh, they asked parents what they were looking for uh, for their kids to do. So let's see how some of these things align. So parents are looking for exposure to new experiences and perspectives for their for their kids, uh, sort of opening their eyes to new things, allowing them to explore their passions, to follow uh, things that they the skills that they might be interested in, as well as allowing their children to um, interact with other kids, um, try new things, meet new people. So I think these are all pretty important things outside of just learning uh, for kids. I know that, um, you know, my kids, for example, were really musically inclined. So uh, talking with them about, you know, opportunities to take music lessons to en enhance their skills was important. And, and that's actually turned into uh, what I hope is a lifelong experience uh, for my kids who are now in bands. And actually one of them is playing in battle of the bands uh, uh, at the university is that in, in the coming weeks. So that's pretty good. And I think it's really important for kids to be able to interact with other kids. I think from a society perspective, um, I think that's one of the things that that camps and summer programs allow our kids to do is it allows us to uh, maybe interact with kids that you know maybe aren't the neighbors right or aren't the people who are in in your classroom but you know from other parts of the the areas that you live or if you're visiting a residence camp from other other parts of the country as well uh, these kids may have different um, uh, 
uh, cultural differences, uh, different perspectives on life. And so I think it's really great that kids can kind of come together and, and experience that. In our own uh, uh, research that Play My Kids does, we, we um, asked over 300 parents sort of what activities their kids were interested in uh, for the summer. And as you can see, academics kind of falls in the middle. So I think that kind of um, is in alignment with like with the Wallace Foundation and maybe even the poll question here where parents are looking for their kids to do. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's important to sort of balance balance the thing, all these needs um, for, for our children. And it's not just about the ABCs and one, two, threes. Um, the partnership for 21st century skills, um, did a study themselves. They're a nonprofit out of DC and they interviewed some of the biggest companies in the U S to, to find out what skills they're uh, looking for in new hires. And they kind of fell into two categories. One is, is in, uh, knowledge skills. So these are basically not just, um, you know, the, the things that you might learn in a book, but also uh, how you apply, apply that knowledge. So critical thinking skills, being able to be creative and be able to collaborate. And I think this is really important, especially with all the advances in technology that we have today, because um, things are always going to be replaced and, but it's still important to know how to apply the knowledge that you've learned uh, to, to come up with creative ways to solve problems. In addition to that, uh, they also sort of bucket 21st century skills into uh, life skills. Um, maybe, you may, you know, in my day, we should call these street smarts. I have a friend uh, who likes to say uh, he got his degree in the school of, in the college of hard knocks. Um, so it doesn't matter what kind of, uh, you know, job you're going to get in the future. The, these are the these are the types of skills that you're going to need to be able to be successful within within that job, to be able to be flexible, uh, be self-directed, uh, to be able to be productive and, and take on leadership roles. And I think that especially summer camps, especially um, provide kids the opportunity to learn these life skills and these knowledge skills um, while they're having fun, which I think is which is important. Again, looking at our own study of parents, uh, you can see here some of the top top things around independence and friendship uh, and leadership skills sort of go in line with that as well. And so I think what that tells me is that parents value their kids getting out of the house, getting off their devices, getting out in the real world. Because if because there's you know also studies that show that kids are more lonely than ever. And so uh, summer learning programs are a great way uh, for them to learn these skills. And parents want their kids to get out into the world. So with that, um, you know, some recommendations that I have that I have for parents that I work with on a on a you know weekly and daily basis. Uh, the first is really just to get your kids out there and, and participate in something. Right. If anything, I think we've been able to show some of the benefits here of a getting into uh, a summer program is going to help you academically, particularly if you're doing one that uh, is academic focused. Uh, and there's also benefits in building those soft skills and those knowledge skills uh, that kids are going to need to be successful to one day get those jobs and be um you know, productive workers in our in our society. Uh, prioritize those interests. Um, so I think it's a combination again of what are you, what are your kids' current interests that they have today, whether it's music, whether it's dance, theater, uh, and then also using it as an opportunity to expand their horizons as well, um, and what other types of things that they. Uh, they, they might want to experience. I know uh, a lot of times parents come to me and say, oh, well, my kid likes this particular activity. Well, maybe they like music, um, but there may be um, a theater opportunity that is sort of an extension of music that they may also enjoy. 
Uh, so giving them the opportunity to try as many things as possible uh, because this is the best time to do it. Like as a parent, you know, you can have your kids try things for a little investment really uh, to see if they enjoy it. Maybe it's in sports, try baseball, try basketball and uh, you know, see what sticks at the end of the day. Uh, and you'll see which one of those things they end up wanting to take on in their future. So yeah, embrace, embrace variety. So I think as parents, I think we can sometimes over schedule our kids. So I think it's important to take, uh, a, take those family vacations, allow that unstructured time, uh, just as you, as, as, as parents, you know, in your jobs need a break, uh, from, from that hard work that you do. Uh, kids need a break too, um, you know, from the schoolwork that they done. So, so have the opportunities, but at the same time, they also need the ability to uh, not, you know, not lose, you know, all, all the things that they've learned uh, and have those study skills and sleep in until noon every day. So they do, they do require a little bit of structured time as well. Uh, what I like to do for parents when planning their kids summers is I like to, get them in those uh, activities that are outdoors or sports related early. Again, kind of coming from the South, it's also helpful because it, it gets hotter during the summer. So kind of get some of those things done earlier in the summer before the heat gets too, too bad. Uh, and it also gives the kids an opportunity to have those breaks that they need. Uh, and then towards the middle of the summer and towards the end of summer, start sprinkling in some of the academic programs as well. Um, uh, there's certainly a lot of STEM programs that are out there. I think kids, uh, you know, can can gravitate towards, you know, whether it's robotics or coding. Uh, you know, there's lots of opportunities for them to get involved. And even if your kid's not uh, into into more of the traditional STEM things, uh, a lot of programs are also uh, sort of intertwining uh, some academic pieces into whether it's arts and crafts or or into even some of the sports activities. And again, they're going to learn those 21st century skills that they need. And lastly, uh, if cost is prohibited, uh, definitely seek the community options that are available to you uh, through your towns and your municipalities. Uh, they seem to be uh, you know, providing those opportunities. There's also programs like the Salvation Army and uh, Boys and Girls Clubs also have a lot of good programs uh, as well. In fact, I was recently looking at uh, uh, one of the um, end of year statements for Boys and Girls Club, and they had drawn a conclusion to their program as far as how those kids are performing in school. Uh, so certainly don't let costs be a prohibitor. You can also look at scholarship opportunities as well. Uh, you can look Programs will have them on their websites that you can do. And usually they're just kind of a short, you know, they can vary in size, but a lot of them are just really just short forms. Others are a little bit more tense, but you can find those opportunities to, uh, you know, to, to help make uh, programs more effective for your, for your family. And just remember, I mean, summer, summer is about, um, you know, kids rejuvenating, but it can also be a time for them to continue to maintain the skills that they have so that they're a little bit sharper and hopefully continue to do well in school. And studies also show that kids that are doing these structured programs also are also just as likely to basically stay out of trouble uh, and, uh, you know, make better decisions as well. So all in all, it's just, it's just better for kids. So with that, I think we'll uh, stop and open the floor for questions. Okay, and um, we did have a couple questions come in. Thank you, David, for that insightful information. Um, one question, what if my child is resistant to structured summer learning programs? Yeah, um, so I think it's important for parents to let their kids participate in the process. Uh, so by by talking with them about what they what they wanna do, uh, over the summer helps give the kids a sense of ownership, right? That they feel that they're part of the process. 
in that. Uh, obviously, as a parent, there may be things that you're like, well, hey, we, we really need to do this because you know, you know, <laughs> summer school is <laughs> summer school is for you, kid. But at the same time, if you can if you can allow your child to participate in the decision making process, they're going to be more likely to want to attend that. The other thing you can do is um, invite their friends. Uh, so kids, it, uh, studies also show that kids that attend programs with other kids, they're more likely to enjoy that situation uh, better and have a better outcome. Agreed. Yeah. Um, can technology play a role in preventing summer learning loss? Yeah, we didn't really touch on that uh, in this presentation, but absolutely. I think if anything, the pandemic has accelerated technology as far as online learning goes. Now, kids, I think we're pretty, um, that's what I'm before, like just inundated with that during the pandemic. I think we we're kind of like, I could, they couldn't wait to go back to school. But now that they're back in school, they're accustomed to uh, to the online learning pro programs. And there are some options out there. And, and some of those, which are nice, is that you can kind of fit them into your schedule. So they, they may not be eight hour or even four hour sessions, but they may be two hour sessions, right? So you can find some online learning programs that you can kind of fit into your child's day to kind of break up the mon mundane aspects of it if they're just home for the whole week. So uh, definitely look into to some of the online uh, opportunities that are out there. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Let's see. Um, how early should I start planning for summer activities? <laughs> I think uh, I put that into two two categories. So if you're interested in doing an overnight camp or residence uh, resident camp, those camps typically start registration actually in the fall. So what you may, uh, one thing that I suggest to parents is getting on those, if, if you know a program that you're interested, go ahead and get on their mailing list. And that way you'll get notifications uh, for when their registrations open up, but they actually start pretty early. Uh, not to say that you still, there still isn't availability in those residence camps, but that's when parents should start planning for overnight camps. For day camps, it's a little bit differently. I find that most programs start publishing their summer programs uh, about the beginning of March. Some do a little bit early, some do a little bit later. Uh, I find that sometimes the municipalities tend to do it a little closer to, uh, uh, you know, May. Uh, so if you're looking for day camps uh, right around February, March is the time that you're going to start planning that you may, may all of them may not be available, but you'll start uh, seeing some of them them pop up. So it's a, it's, it's a lot earlier than you actually think uh, when you need to start looking, looking for opportunities. Great. All right. Well, David, thank you so much for sharing all your valuable insights and expertise with us. Um, and your passion for empowering parents and enriching children's lives is truly inspiring. So thank you. Um, I also want to thank our wonderful audience for joining us today. And if you'd like to learn more about Jackrabbit Care or Plan My Kids, please reach out to us. Um, you can find our information on the screen. Um, thank you again for joining us. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.